I'd like to take a look at uh, the idea of using our calculator to help us find zeros of polynomial functions. So uh, I picked out a problem for us to try here in section 3.3, three, page 3, 322, and we'll do number 56. It says to find the zeros of p, where the function p of x is 3x to the fourth minus 4x cubed minus 11x squared plus 16x minus 4. Well, to start things out, start a solution here. To start things out, let's take a look at an idea of what the graph might look like um, uh, before we actually get out the calculator and start graphing it. Well, first we know that the leading coefficient, in this case I'll call it a sub 4, is 3, is odd. And the degree n is 4 is even. So we know as far in terms of the end behavior that as x approaches either infinity or minus infinity, that p of x will keep growing large, keep going up, so to speak. All right, so uh, knowing that, let's go ahead and see if we can get a complete graph of this function here. So let's call up our calculator. I'll keep the keystrokes on here so we can kind of know what we're doing. Uh, so I've turned the calculator on, and then to get to where we are, just hit the Y equals key, and that'll give us our, our uh, graphing function menu. So let's go ahead and enter the uh, uh, function now. 3x to the fourth, use the caret key for exponentiation, minus 4x cubed, minus 11x squared, plus 16x, minus 4. So there's our function. Now to graph it, um, well, we need a starting point here. So I'll go ahead and hit the zoom key. And then option 6 is the standard viewing window. So let's start with that. Now let me switch over to the large screen here so you can see it being graphed. So we can see our function here. We don't quite have the complete function, but let's see what we can see here. The function goes up on the left and right side. Well, that's exactly the end behavior. So we have most of the graph here, and it looks like the, uh, the smallest x can be is about, what, negative 1, 2, negative 3. There's negative 3, and there's positive 3. So it looks like we have, what, 1, 2, 3, 4 x-intercepts on this interval from negative 3 to 3. So it's a fourth degree polynomial function. We have four x-intercepts, so all of, the, all of the zeros of this function must be real numbers. Now to get a little bit better idea of what the function looks like, let's go ahead and trace here a little bit. I'll hit the trace button on the top row, and let's just kind of trace to the left. So I'll hit the left cursor key here. Now notice the y values are going to negative 17, negative 24, negative 26. And so it looks like we want to make the y min a smaller number. So let's go ahead and adjust that now. I'll hit the window button on the top row. And let's make our x min, we said it's negative 3. Make sure you use the negative sign by the decimal point, not the minus sign. x max is 10. And we'll just keep that increments in 1. And the y min, well, make, let's make that negative 30. I remember seeing negative 26 there. 10 is fine for the y max. And the uh, y scale, that's it says um, 1. Let's make the y scale 5. All right, let's go ahead and graph it now and see what we get. So now it looks like we get a little bit better picture of the graph now. Now, let's just kind of take a look at it. It looks like there's an x-intercept here, so we have one negative and then there's two of them real close together because the graph goes up to the x-axis, goes over the x-axis, and then back down below it. So uh, let's take a look and see where these points might be. And to do that, let's use the rational zeros theorem. All right. So from the rational zeros theorem, Let's see here. First, the factors of our constant 
which is um, uh, 4, excuse me, negative 4, those factors are what? Plus or minus 1, plus or minus 2, and plus or minus 4. And then, if we take a look at the factors of the leading coefficient, a sub 4, that's 3, they are plus and minus 1 and plus or minus 3. So, having said that, it looks like the possible rational zeros are, well, they have to be in, they have to be uh, uh, a fraction with one of these numbers being in the numerator, one of those numbers being in the denominator. So let's just kind of go ahead and list them. First, I'll take one and then divide it by both of these numbers. So if we take plus or minus one and divide by plus or minus one, we get plus or minus one. And then dividing by three, we get plus or minus one third. And now moving over to two, we'll divide by each of these. So that'll give us plus or minus two and plus or minus two thirds. And then finally moving over to four, we get plus or minus four and plus or minus four thirds. Now notice here, I didn't rank those in increasing order. You don't necessarily have to do that. That really doesn't matter. So if what we're saying here is, if this function has rational zeros, it must be on this list. That's what the rational zeros theorem tells us. All right, so armed with that information, let's go back and take a look at our graph again. Now, here's, here's negative one on our x scale. This number looks like it might be close to negative 2, doesn't it? So let's go ahead and evaluate our function at negative 2 and see what we get. So to do that, let me switch over to the, um, the key presses again. Let me clear that out. So here's what we want to do. Hit the second button and then hit the trace key to get the calculate menu. And then we want the very first option there that says value. Now let me switch over to the large screen again. And now it's asking you to plug in a, a value for x. I'm going to plug in negative 2. And notice what we get. We get 0 for y. And that's exactly what we mean by a 0, isn't it? That you know, it's, it's an x value which makes our function value 0. So it looks like negative 2 is one of the zeros. Now let's move along here. And I'm just going to use the free moving cursor. I didn't hit the trace key. I'm just cursoring over now across the x-axis till we get kind of close to our next x-intercept. It's about right there, right? So what do I have here? About 0.38. Well, let's look at our list again. What's close to that, like 0.3? Well, I guess like one-third might be. So let's go ahead and try that number. So uh, same procedure again. I'll hit the second key, trace to get the calc menu. Press 1 for value, and now we want to put in 1 third. Hit the Enter key, and notice there, we get exactly 0 again. So it looks like 1 third is going to be our second uh, real 0. Now, let's move along, take a look at the graph again. Now, let's see, there's one, there's a 0 right over here. Now, let's trace along a little bit more, again, just using the free moving cursor. All right, so it looks like it's very close to one. So maybe one is a rational zero. Second trace to get the calc menu. Press one for value. Plug in one. And whoop, there's another one. There's the third one. All right, so we know all of our zeros are rational now because if they're irrational, they have to occur in conjugate pairs, that plus or minus thing from the quadratic formula. So it looks like we so far we have what? Negative, negative two one-third, and one, and this other one, again, not using a trace key, but just the free moving cursor, I'm just going to, and it looks like it's very close to two, let's try two, second key, trace to get the calc menu, option one, and then plug in a two, and there's the last one right there, isn't it, all right, so let's go ahead and summarize now, uh, by evaluating, The zeros of P are negative 2, oh, I'm sorry, x equals negative 2, 
x equals one-third, x equals